could resume recording. And then I was going to open Facebook. Yeah, it's going to tell us that we are going to go live any second now. You're on. I know, on. I know. I'm going to do my catchphrase here, aren't I? It yeah, says yeah. we're live on Facebook. So, uh, good evening once again, and welcome to another TWW Lockdown Live. My name is Dan Fudge. With me, we've got Ben and we've got Steve. And also, we've, as you can see there in the corner, we've got Wednesday legend or Sheffield legend, as it is, Mr. Terry Curran. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks a lot for joining us, Terry. How's it going, Paul? You all right? Fine, thank you. Barbing the result again last night. But other than that, <laughs> yeah, you know, not too bad. Well, I'll tell you what, we're going to get there later on. We're going to talk about your career. We've also, uh, we're have also we also live on Facebook as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to get some um, some comments come in from people. They're going, to, uh, they're going to ask us some questions as well. See, you know, see what it's like, you know, from the people that remember back in the day. You know what I mean? You know, when, you know, yeah. when, when men were men and all resting it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Terry. So uh, as with these things, normally, uh, young Ben here has, uh, has done his own work. So, uh, Ben, are you going to start us off, pal? Yeah, as usual, I've uh, I've done a bit. Um, so, obviously, started in in the non-league before moving to Doncaster. I've, we've said it a couple of times now to, to different guests that we've had that have come through the non-league, such as Guy Whittingham and Craig Rowcastle and stuff. Do you, do you feel that that prepared you better than academy football? I, I suppose there wasn't academy football then as we know it now, but even so... <laughs> To be honest, Ben, I, I, I do think the academy football could be helpful to, 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 to players. I really do. But, I mean, back in my day, you just played street football and, and that helped me more than anything else. And you were allowed to play with, you know, uh, older older men. I mean, I can remember playing 15, 15 years of age, playing with 21-year-olds in open-age football. So it does help you. It toughens you up. And in my day, people kick kick lumps out of you and the referee you'd, you'd say something to the referee like how many times are you going to let this happen and he'll say well that's the first one you know and so they already knew what were happening the referees but they still let it uh, pass by so street football uh, and playing with my mates did help me a lot but I, I do think academy can can be um, a big help to young players but they're overcoached at times you know, I, I think personally, if it, around about 14 or 15 for them to come in, right? But younger than that, just let them play football with the mates and let them learn the skills itself, the control of a ball and trying to beat people. Not just trying to beat people, but everything about the game, playing in tight areas. You don't never play in tight areas now in academy football. Mm -hmm. And everything stopped and start. I mean, they fetched it in, you know, to, to try and let the game flow a little bit. But what they did, what they still do, I should say, is they still stop uh, and, and trying to coach the players. Let natural talent come through. And, and as they get older, they'll start to uh, fathom out, you know, what's the best way uh, to, to try things. And they'll, they'll know when, when to do it and when not to do it. And then other players will help them. And then you, the coaching come in, can come into it and, and uh, give them a little bit of new ideas. But trying to give them too many ideas at once when the young kids, and I know kids take more in, but it, you know, your brain's telling you something, but the coach is telling you something and you're trying to please the coach because if you're not pleasing the coach, whether they like it or not, some coaches won't pick those players, you know, and especially when it's a young kid, then it, it, it can be a distraction to them and a down, you know, a downer on them. That's a, yeah, uh, that's a really interesting point because like you've got, um, I'm sorry about these references, Ben, because he's going to be quite old. But back in, you know, back in the turn of the century, we had players like for, for this country, like Joe Cole. We had Wayne Rooney. Um, if they, Joe Cole's an interesting one because very gifted with the football. You know, even Jack Wilshere to to an extent. Had he have been brought up in a different country, for example, Spain, where they invested themselves in Lionel Messi, do you feel that their raw talent and their raw aggression was kind of coached out of them a little bit? I mean, Joe Cole never really reached those echelons of being top end, did he? It wasn't regarded, you know, hit your left footed, go and play on left son. That was kind of it, wasn't it? Yeah. You see, you've hit, you've hit the nail bang, bang on the head there. You are 100% right. What's the first thing that, you know, pundits and uh, 
anyone what goes to a football match when we get foreign players come in, what's the first thing they say? They look technically better than than we are. We are. Mm-hmm. Well, even now, I mean, I look at players today, and there's some absolutely terrific players, skillful players, and like Joe Cole, like you said, not only was he coached maybe out of expressing himself more, he was put in an area which didn't suit him. Mm-hmm. You know, they put him out on, 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 on wing or put him in an area. If they'd have played him like a Messi and let him go and play, he'd be the one what would be the link up and could see a killer pass, brave enough to play the killer pass. Where when you play, when the player signs certain players, you leave them turn around and say, it's a safe option. Well, safe option, there isn't such a thing as a safe option because you've got to be able to get out of tight scenarios and you've got to be able to see openings early enough and quick enough to give your teammate uh, the best opportunity uh, to take that. And you're right, they have ruined, we have ruined in this country lots and lots and lots of good players, because we have had them throughout the years, and we still produce... I mean, this lot now, what we've got today, uh, I think they're absolutely... Some of these are, are brilliant. And I'm not, it's not as I want to knock Gary Southgate or, 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 or any English coach. I don't. I want us to be successful, the coaches and everyone else. But if we got a Pep or a, an Arsene Wenger managing this England team, you'd see a far, far different uh, tempo to his game. And mm. I will tell this about Southgate. He has tried to change it, but mm. it's still it's still slow in his tempo. So yes, you, I agree with everything what you said there about not only Joe Cole but lots of players. Paul Scholes, mm-hmm. he's not an athlete, but what no. did we do with him? We got Gerard and Lampard, and we don't know how the coaches don't know how to fit them three players into a system, a philosophy. Mm-hmm. You know, they say, oh, we. Before the start, they said we can't play these three. You hear the certain managers, whereas you see Guardiola, Cluffy, Shankly in my day, Bob Paisley, right? They would play the four attacking players. But those players, when you look at Dalglish, he worked he worked back. When you looked at Liverpool, they worked for each other. Good players do, but they mm-hmm. see things. And when I say they see things, they see things early enough when it's defensive or when, when it's uh, uh, attacking. So you've got to get these players into your team. And I looked at Tottenham on on, on Sunday with Bale, um, Kane, Mora and Son. And they looked a different team. So no. we have to, ben, uh, I'm saying Ben, we have, to, we have to get these players into a system what suits the team and those players. And mm-hmm. until we do that, we will struggle. You mentioned the name there, Terry, in Brian Clough, and you obviously played under him. Now, who doesn't love a Cluffy story? So, have you got one? Because we, we've had Mark Crossley on, and he, he had one or two. So, I wonder if you've got one. Well, I've got I've got a few, but um, here's a prime example. I remember Tony Woodcock. Remember Tony Woodcock? Yeah. Played with Forrest. I've heard it name. England. I don't remember him. But... Great player, Ben. Absolutely great player. And uh, he was selling him to Lincoln or Doncaster. And if one of them had to come up with the extra five thousand uh, pounds, Cluffy would have sold him. Anyway, we're talking about certain uh, aspects of the game. We were, t- we were playing at Bristol City, and he said to me, "He said, young man, who was the best player on the park last night?" I said, "Tony Wood- Woodcock." He said, "You know nothing about football, lad." I said, "You sell him, and you'll regret it." Right? What? Six weeks, seven weeks later. We're all on training pitch. Comes over to us all, and he comes back. Young man, I'm sorry, kid can't play football, and you don't know something about football. But <laughs> lots of stories with Cluffy. But he just the greatest thing about him, if he didn't, if he didn't like you, I remember Martin O'Neill. He said to Martin O'Neill, "Young man, I don't like you, but I'll play you." So the thing about him, he wanted <laughs> he wanted to get the ball on the floor. He wanted you to play football. Mm-hmm. He never spoke about the opposition. He always said, cut out dangers, right? Be brave and take chances. So he got he got this horror about him that people, even if they didn't like him, respected him. You know, and that's that 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 was the main thing with him. He just wanted you to play football and not he never worried about the opposition. Whereas when I played with some managers, Jack, I found I found Jack 
Jack was a better player than what people give him credit for. Because when we when we when he trained, he would join in occasionally, and he he, he had he had a lot of ability. But don't forget, you got Bobby Charlton, his brother. I know he's a big lad, was Jack, but he, he had got good technical ability. But he he panicked. Not well, not panicked. He was he was scared of losing. I mean, I once said to him about that, like it Le- leads great team. I said, you all should have won a lot more, Jack. And he blamed um, Gabby Sprake. He said, if we've had a top goalkeeper, he said, we would have won a lot more, Terry. I said, but you're like, Revy, you, if you're winning one nil, you want to get it into the corner. And I understand it. You know, it's because, it, you know, when you're going for major trophies or if you're in a relegation battle, you know, you, you've got to cut the mistakes out, mm-hmm. right? But if you don't take that chance of trying to win, then you're going to lose more than you'll ever uh, will win. So things about them, Cluffy and all these type of managers, they've got something what lifts players. I mean, Jack, I, I didn't like the way our Jack played football, but I, I would have run through a big wall for him. <laughs> no, but I would have done. I would have done. Nah, fair enough. Fair enough. Have we got any more then? Um, I, well, I've got Facebook up. So there, there's a couple from Facebook. Um who is the best player that you played alongside, Terry? Well, I played. I played with some absolutely world class players: Colin Todd, David Nish, uh, Roy McFarlane, John Robertson, Ian Boyer, Andy Gray, uh, Kevin Sheedy, Peter Reid. I can go on and on. Peter Reid and Colin Todd without... are interesting, there, Terry. The best... Sorry, go on. But the well, best can... one before you finish. The best on. one I ever played with. And I forgot all about my, my mate at Southampton, Alan Ball. But he was, you know, at uh, 32, 33 years of age. Charlie George, I'm telling you, it's it's criminal what the English managers did to him and yeah. Curry and Hudson and these players. It's absolutely criminal because these players may have, may have got us to a World Cup final or a European Cup final and we wish, would not play them. So... What what do you think it was with Charlie George? Because he's like a, he's like a legend, isn't he? Is he, he where was oh. he? Ars- Arsenal, right? Uh, Arsenal and Derby. Cup I played final. with him at Derby, and then mm-hmm. he came to Southampton. But obviously, when Ch- I think Charlie was on there a week or two weeks, when, then I came to Sheffield Wednesday. Mm-hmm. But I'm telling you, Charlie would do things in, 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 in training, and I mean, I used to do things, and people would ask me how you do that. But I remember watching Charlie, and I said to him, "How did you do that, Charlie?" And he sometimes he'd whistle that, you know, he'd put the spin on the ball and he'd spin. Like you know, like it's a person would throw a ball, uh, a stick for dog, you know, and then whistle him back, get the ball back. He's put a he put a spin on the ball, Charlie, and he's whistling all the ball from spinning back to him. He got every mortal thing, pace, strength, you know. But probably Charlie is like me. He answered back, and if you answer back, you, you know you're never going to get anywhere. If well, you that's what they the say. Well, answer back. You know, it's what they say about Brian Clough, isn't it? You know, the greatest England manager that never was never, because because yeah. he just answered back. Yeah. It's not that you answer back. You're asking a question. Is that right? You know, what? why not try it this way? You know, but I don't understand managers. And you have to be the boss. Listen, players, Charlie worked, worked as hard as anybody I've ever seen. Right? And he spoke a lot of sense. It weren't that he was being critical with the manager at Derby. He would say... That's wrong, you know. Try this, mm-hmm. but, and then the manager has to do it how he thinks is best for him. But sometimes they do get it wrong. He's the best I've ever played with Charlie. Good to know. I'll uh, I'll, I'll gen up on Charlie because I know he's a bit of an FA Cup hero, isn't he, for uh, for Arsenal? But go on, Steve. Anyway, watch take, him, take a, go on, on YouTube and watch him playing for Derby against Real Madrid. <laughs> what a classic, classic performance. Of an English, skillful, technical player. That's a fixture I've not come across in my lifetime, if I'm honest, dear Terry. But I'll, I'll, t- I'll take, I'll take a look at it on your advice. Go on, Steve. I was just going to. I find it really interesting because um, I'm, I'm obviously a little bit older than Ben and slightly older than Fudge. You know, it's, it's a difference. I'm always interested in finding in, in, in people that consider the differences between the way that players played with due respect in your days versus now and, to, you know, looking at it in, in terms of, like you've talked about earlier, the technique and the way that we play nowadays. Um, do you think that, take Charlie George, for example, do you think he would have, how do you think it have held up in the, the, the sort of style of play that we, we, we see nowadays? Without being rude on that, 
they are hypothetical questions, aren't they? In a sense, I mean, of course, yeah, what, yeah. What, what I'm trying to get across is, and it's great to, 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 to talk about. I'm going to tell you, I'll say, he would play, and like these good players today would play nowadays on bad pitches, right? Uh, I remember 35, 40 years ago, I look at Guardiola, and I'm 10 years older than Guardiola, and I was arguing about playing football, I press and you know, using the ball quick but still having players in the team, you know, like a Stan Bowles or Curry, what could open it up? Hudson's, you know, uh, Dave Thompson, great wingers, you know, uh, what were uh, in and around in my day. The problem is, what they, what they did in my day, they would kick you off at park, right? Or they would put a man-to-man -man man, uh, mark, uh, marking you. Whereas today, they protect the back four. You know, uh, the I mean, people say the game's quicker. The only, the only reason why the game is quicker, and it is quicker, and the only reason why it's quicker is, is that the, the ball is kept in play more. When I would play, the goalkeeper, you could pass it back to the goalkeeper, pick it up, and kill four, five, ten seconds of the game. Right? The, then the, the opposition would turn the backs and, and, and drop back five or ten yards, and then he put the ball back down again. Whereas now, he can't pick it up. It's got to play. That many teams now try to play defensive football I mean, Guardiola's done it now for what? But before Guardiola, the Brazilians did it. I mean, I, I don't know if you remember the great Brazilian 70s team. 70s, squad, the Carlos Alberto you know, or, you know, they kept the ball and passed with accuracy like no other team I've ever seen, you know. And then we got uh, Leeds United starting to do it. But a lot of good teams in, in England started to do it then, you know. And Guardiola's fetched that. People said it couldn't be done in... in, in Anything can be done. The, the problem with the English football it, is it's up and down football. It's never consistent because the majority of the teams are giving the ball away. So, yes, players would have played. The good players will play because they've got a natural football brain and they think about it. Um, the ones what would struggle more would be the ones what went out drinking a lot. Shocking. <laughs> no, but what I'm, what, what I'm trying to say, I mean... I, Brian Robson will, would still have been a great player today. Yeah. If you saw him drink, you wouldn't believe how he, how he trained. But I played with a kid called John Bailey. He couldn't train because he had that much to drink. Whereas Rob, Robbo or, uh, and Alan Ball, they were big drinkers. But they gave up and trained. John Bailey couldn't train. And it's not, what I'm trying to say is the fitness levels now are better because of the dietitian side of it. Mm -hmm. Right? And the sports science side, side of it, mm -hmm. and players do look after the body, uh, the body's better, and that is the two major things. The technical side of it is improving in a sense that we've got foreign coaches coming to the game, and they're looking for technical players. But I think today's players could play now in our day. Um, the problem, what they, they would find more than anything else, would be the brutal tattles. Yeah, the physicality you know, of it. Yeah, yeah. you look back That's on some they, old ones, they don't would you? Maybe find difficult because of the personalities, and I'm not knocking them. I've got, I've got a son saying, not Jock because he's, he's a, he's a tough lad. This Jock, where Tom, if they're not going the own way, they're not playing, and that's what the problem is. Probably with a lot of young players today, you know, uh, they sulk a lot more than what we would have done in in our days. But we would have been frightened to sulk, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Better. It's a better society today in one sense, but it's it's worse in other sense. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think, on, Steve. What do you what do you make of obviously you're talking about the difference in terms of the physicality of the game? I mean, we've had Shaw's had two red cards this year year. And we we talk about it a lot in in and amongst ourselves. And I go out and I, I I'm quite vocal about it. I don't think Shaw should have been sent off once this year. I think the two no. times it made have been absolutely fantastic. Um, what do you make of, you know, shall we call it the softening of the game a little bit? Well, I prefer it because I got brutally kicked. <laughs> <laughs> and and you're, allowed, you're allowed now to, 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 to express yourself. Where I agree with you is this. There's a lot more people will look at a sending off and they'll say that's not a sending off. Yet, the referee either gives it or the, is it Stock, Stock the Park that they... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And somebody there is, is, is it's like giving a fine line of a, of a sending off. I agree with you 100%. You know, if it's a sending off, 
let, let it be a sending off, right? But for, for, for little things, like sometimes you think, well, hang on a bit, he can't, he couldn't have stopped himself. No, there is players what will still try and do players, because what anybody says. But majority of the time, we, see, we all see it. Yet yeah, some people will still will agree with the referees and say, oh, he's got to be sent off, he should be sent off. You know, but opinions is opinions, and you can't stop people having opinions. And at the end of the day, it's, if it's their opinion. But when, when, when it spoils the game, when a, when a man gets sent off, what really shouldn't have been sent off? So I, I agree with you on that. Okay, so let's uh, let's move on forward into your career then. Let's let's get to Wednesday. So you're on the south coast. Uh, you know you're you're in Southampton. You, you you're there on the docks and late night kebab houses and all the rest of it. And then and somebody says to you, "Do you want to come back up north?" Uh, you know, was it was it Jack that enticed you? You know, did you have much of a say in it? I mean, you know, what what went off up there? Well, I don't think I would have left Forest at some point. I want to play for Sheffield Wednesday. I always wanted to play for them at some point. If I wouldn't have got the injury I got at Forest, I don't think I would have left. It took me nearly 12, 14 months to recover from a serious uh, knee ligament injury. Um, I went to Derby. The doc was chopping and changing, selling players. Uh, and I was, that's the only time, oh, but many of us, the only one that never tapped me up, the rest of them all tapped me up. What happened, what happened with, with, with uh, Southampton? It's a beautiful area. I was enjoying my football there. Uh, started to play really well, got my confidence back from the injury. And I got a phone call from Morris Setters. Well, Morris signed me as a young kid. He knew I was a Sheffield Wednesday fan. He said, why don't you come and help us out, at, to, me and Jack out at Sheffield Wednesday? Um, and as managers do, they said that you can make yourself a legend there if, you, if, if we're successful. And that's how it came about. And I, um, we, I met him up at Leeds uh, in Cinderella's Rockefeller's nightclub after we played the semi-final of the um, League Cup, me and Borley went in and uh, Jack then said to me, I, would you seriously come and play for us? And I said, of course I would. And Borley were going mad. He said, you're too good to go and play in, in third division. I said, I'm, I'm going because I want to play for them. But I said to him, if we qualify, if we get through to the final, I'm going to play in the final. Or I want to be here for the final. You can't guarantee you're going to play. I said, but I'm going to be, uh, I'll be, I'll have to wait while, while the final and then I'll come. Um, we got to the final. And like I said, McManamy then offered me a three year contract. Um, but I'd already made up my mind I wanted to go play at Sheffield Wednesday. I mean, I'm glad I, I'm, I'm glad I did, but it weren't a good move for my career in one sense going to play third division football. I, I guess not. I can imagine that uh, that knocking you back a bit. Uh, now, as you know, we're, we're on Facebook. Uh, a few people have fired a few questions in. Ben, what have, what, what have we got live there, pal? Um, and Andrew Smith has said, Terry was my first and biggest Wednesday legend. My claim to fame when he was watching us play football sometime between 1979 and 81. He said, I was about 10 years old. He pulled me to one side and told me I did a great run down the wing, but need to look up. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, son. Yeah, you're all right. But... Always be aware what's around you. <laughs> Ten year old. Put the Alex Terry Curran. Get your eyes up. Get your head up. Have a look. <laughs> there's, there's another one from Karen Birch. I was in the Terry Curran fan club and collected tokens for four weeks for four posters in the star. <laughs> <laughs> There you are, Terry. Do you remember? Do you remember yeah, I remember that. I remember the fan club and having to collect the uh, the tokens for the. Uh, they must have made a fortune out of me that paper. <laughs> yeah, I think we still are, boss. I think, I think we still are. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, look, you know, we're nearly at the halfway point. Uh, I'm just going to uh, thank our sponsor, Mike Constantine Wealth Management, who, who makes all this possible. Thank you so much. And uh, so what we're going to do, Terry, I'm going to change it up a bit. Normally, we'll talk about your career and, and all the rest of it. But Sheffield Wednesday, as it stands, are shite. And, uh, and I want to, you know, I was listening to your podcast the other day. And, uh, you know, it was a bit of a preview before the Rotherham game. And, and you know, we, you know, last night was our seventh loss in six. Uh, you know, we lost in the 97th minute. Um, you know, we had, we had, we were playing against 10 men. We had about four strikers on the pitch at one point. I mean, so let's, let's start with this season as a whole. So let's talk about Gary Monk and his year eight haircut. Let's talk about Pulis Ball. Let's talk about Thompson. Let's talk about Darren Moore. So, so let's, let's go through there, Terry. What, you know, what, what do you make of it all? Well, for me, it all, all this started when we played Huddersfield 
in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. We went there not to win a game, and we could have won that game. Exactly, right? I agree with you. And, and then we played them second leg at, at Hillsborough. We go one 0 up. Carlos brings off uh, Fletch, who scored the goal, uh, and, and go defensive minded. Right? Look, you've got to you've got to try and win games, mm -hmm. but you've got to have players in your team what can defend, and you've got to have players in your team what have to be aware the importance when you haven't got the ball, right? Not putting players in teams just to be more defensive and pulling a, a, a technical player out of the game, which may cause help us win a game. So that, that was the game what started it all. And from then, we have been shocking. And I mean shocking. We have tried everything uh, to get it right. But when I say we tried everything, we seem to, to sign the same type of player, uh, managers, you know, and what we what, what we coached, what what we got co uh, coached in our day, and I went when I, when I went on coaching courses, everything is like diagonal play, right, or channel ball. You're giving the ball away. You're giving the ball away too much. Manager will turn around and say, "Well, I can only play a certain way with the players I've got." Well, you sign those players. Now I'm saying he signs them. I'd like to see a manager come out and say, "No, I haven't signed these. Chan Service signed these, or whoever's signing them." Because not, none of us know who's signing some of these players. And there's nobody sticks up for players more than me. I always say, it's the manager's fault. And if I was a manager, I would take the responsibility. I wouldn't mm -hmm. shirk from it. If I weren't good enough, I'd turn around and say, well, I'm not good enough. End mm -hmm. of. You know, I thought my way would have been ideal, but it's not turned out that way. Because managers said that players don't listen. Players always listen. Make no mistake. But in the game, it's like anything else. You know, any, any form of work. You'll, you'll find the problem and you have to sort that problem out. But a manager tells you one thing. And by the way, some of these managers, what's telling you, have never been able, they've been never been any good at football, some of them. And they're trying to tell you to solve a problem. Mark. And when things happen on a football field and you lose and you've tried to so, so, solve a problem, Mark, you've got a little man in your head telling you one thing and you're listening to what the manager said. A majority will go that way because they want to play in the team. Mm -hmm. You know, this maverick, what they give to players. They're not mavericks, they're technical players. They see it. And managers want to play players what they think they can rely on. A majority of teams and managers what play that way get relegated and hardly win anything. So we, don't, we haven't had a top quality manager since Ron Atkinson. I thought Francis did reasonably well. But I, the thing is with Trevor Francis, you know, is not... Public, publicly um, outgoing. Like, you yeah, know what outgoing. I mean? outgoing. He's, yeah, you know, know he's, he's not going to galvanise a group of lad, lad, lads, is he? Like, yeah. you know what I mean? There were some big personalities in that dressing room, and yeah. he gets derided a bit for winning stuff with At Atkinson's team, doesn't he? Yeah, I think Ron Atkinson is the best manager we've had since Harry Cattle. I really do. I mean, Jack, I love Jack. You know, great man, and he will always. Uh, make it difficult for the opposition. But Atkinson is the manager what's won a trophy mm. since when, before 66, isn't it? You know, so when you look at it, like that, you know, that's when I started to, we were 2-0 up against Everton and we got beat 3-2. I mean, Jim McCallagher is my favourite Sheffield Wednesday player of all time. Um, and we've always had good players. We've always had good players. But what have we done with them good players? We sold them, you know, and we shouldn't be selling players. That club, I played in that ground, they put 49,000. Whoever was, well, I don't know what chairman was, Bert McGee. I have to be careful what I'm saying here. Or either him, <laughs> whoever were in them gates, if there weren't 60,000 there that day, then somebody were fiddling those gates. Uh, this evening. I'm numbers. Telling you that now because there were thousands there. And that is, it, it's in the middle of the country. So it's a place where players will, will come to. It's a great city, you know. Um, we've just not had manager. And until we, we get a manager with the right philosophy uh, to match what Ron Atkinson, and it was such a shame that Ron left to go to Aston Villa, mm. you know. And I understand that because it's like me going to join Sheffield Wednesday. It's like Steve Bruce going to join Newcastle. Mm -hmm. When you support a team uh, like Ron did in, in Villa, and that's where he was living, but if we could have kept him 
we wouldn't be in this mess. We yeah. would not have been in this mess. Well, let's, I mean, let's talk about that then. So we've got, uh, it's 2017. We've just, we, like you said, we played for a draw at Huddersfield and they were there for the taking and they played for penalties and won beaters on penalties. Now, the following season, it, it's a massive mental digging deep, isn't it? To, to get yeah. people up for a third bite of the cherry. I mean, surely you weren't surprised that it went wrong for Carlos in that season. No. And you see, Surely I you've to... got that third bite of the cherry. After yes, that because he, game. he hadn't done nothing wrong up until the others field. I mean, I went to watch him mm. play at Forest, right? And they beat Forest 3 0. And the football mm. they played that day, I thought, wow, mm. I hope this is I hope this is for real all the time, you know. Um he hadn't done really anything wrong, but he started to go more defensive minded. You know, now we none of us know what what happens with the directors or the owner, uh, with a manager, uh, whether it be the manager's telling them who to play, who to pick and who not to pick. You know, you've got to be brave enough to say, this is who I'm going to pick. And if, if you don't like it, then I'll walk. I mean, that's what I like about Bielsa. He's not a Guardiola where he's going to win major trophies because he wants to fetch his own players. So if you don't, if you don't believe in him, he'll walk. Where Guardiola, what he does is, is, is phenomenal. The guys, what anybody tells you about the money he spends is because he's got to handle them players. And that's what we, we've we never done. We've either fetched players in what's going to be yes, uh, yes sir, to the manager and a manager what's going to be yes sir, to, the, to the owner. And it's, you've got to have somebody what's going to take a risk, right? But can defend and yet can attack and try and win games. And we haven't had one since Ron Atkinson. Fair enough. Go on, Steve. So, thinking about the squads that we've had, we're talking about that sort of third season at the moment. Um, mm. If you were there and you'd have you'd have had the ear of either Chan Siri or Carlos before it went wrong, or even Jos coming in, what sort of advice do you think you'd have given? I know you're talking about taking risks and what. What do you mean as a player or as a, as a, as a, a director of football or something like that? Like that? As a coach, really? Someone well, so like as an advisor. Well, it all depends. In what, it all depends. It all depends if they're willing to listen, and it all depends well, yeah. on what players, what players you, what you players you sign. Look at the players, and I'm going to revert him back. But look at the players we have now. Look at the players we had under Atkinson. Right, David Hurst, Waddle, uh, Shez. You can go on. Nigel Pearson. You know, good centre half. Wouldn't take any nonsense. You know. <laughs> Uh, Chris Woods, we had we had great players there. We haven't had enough great players in our squad. You you know you I can remember going to have it. They were second bottom at league. I went in. I said, "Give me the ball. Just give me the ball. I'll sort it out." Now, we want that type of person in that club, in the team. You know what's even if he loses it, he's not going to be afraid not to want the ball again. You've got to have the right characters. You've got, they've got to, the right players, what's going to look after themselves. You've got to have a training philosophy, what the players are wanting to come into every day. They want, you know, not ones all going to be on bench, on the treatment table thing. I'm not going to train today. It's boring. Because majority of teams, I, I, I'll tell you all now, I will not be behind the bush. But majority of teams will work on defensive football week in, week out. Majority of them. From the middle of the table down. Right, players are bored with. They'll not say anything. They will not say anything. You'll get the odd player like a Charlie George or like me or somebody else, and then you class as this maverick or I don't want to listen. It's a load of rubbish. We all listen, and we all have to have a boss, right? But you're trying to help them. You're trying to give them some help. You know, if things are not going right, I would look. I would have made sure if I'd have been a director of football, we'd have had a better quality of player that we, we, we signed. But it's no good having that quality of player if we're going to play a philosophy, what does not suit that player? So taking that into consideration, because all, all that on board, the, 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 the sort of scenario you've just described there, I'm looking at one player in particular that, you know, is a little bit different to, to what we've got. He's a bit of a talisman. I'm thinking what you've just described there is a, a, a bit of a Barry Bannon. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that sort of player that wants to get in, we look at him and we'll deride him. And I know he, he's quite divisive at the moment. Um, what do you make of somebody like a Barry Bannon in our squad at the minute? Listen, a lot of fans said to me, 
asked me about Joe. Mm -hmm. I said the plane he went wrong, plane through the middle. He goes to Reading, plays a different form form formula. Look at look at him. The bigger one than him is Antonio. Yeah. Antonio. Again, I said the plane when you're playing out wide and you play static football, up and down football, right? You've easily marked out the game because you can you can put somebody on you or you can put someone in to stop the ball going out to you. Right now, Barry Bannon, regardless, look, some fans have the opinion on him like anything else. And if they don't like him, I get that. And they're entitled to their opinion. But what they've got to look at is this give Barry Bannon the ball where he can go forward with it, not sideways and backwards. And the ball's not going over his head. You've got a player on your hand. But what we play, the goalkeeper gets it, he kicks it long. It's going over our midfield player's head. I bet they don't touch, the midfield players don't touch the ball. When we look at what we're playing against teams, I bet we're having maybe 200 to 250 passes. Right? Whereas Norwich will have about four to 500. When you get a Manchester City, you get 900. Right? And I'm not talking about sideways, backwards, that because I hate that as more than I hate the long ball. And when I say about the long ball, we're not talking about a long pass. Because a long pass quality players will give that advantage to their teammate. They'll not play that for sake of playing it. We get the goalkeeper, get it, we boot it, we give it the... No wonder why there's no consistency. So, on, on the back of that then, Terry, you must have been absolutely bloody furious when Tony Pulis turned up with his uh, with his long ball. Bloody hell fire. Well, I'll tell you how furious I was. I've never wrote about Sheffield Wednesday being bad. No? I feel it. I feel it inside. Because I don't want to get into... Because it gets everybody arguing. And I don't want that. I want us to get behind the team. And whoever whoever we've been point, appointed, I've always said, let's give him... Monk, I said, let's give him a chance now he's gone in there. Tony Pulis is the only one. I turned around and said, I will not watch Sheffield Wednesday play football under him. I did the same. It's not, by the way, and it's not him as a person. It's the football. You know we weren't going to go anywhere with it. You know, and it, it proved right. I mean, a lot of people give me some stick about it. I, I can take that all day long, but I will prove right again, you know. So, thinking about that then, um, it was the wrong appointment, and we've had some poor appointments. Is more the right appointment, in your opinion? Well, what I will say about more is this. Will he get the time to, 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 to play his football? Because I will say this. I was impressed with him at um, West Brom. Yes, they went down, but you could see something was uh, happening. They sacked him. The following season, they pointed somebody and they came straight back up. Because West Brom, they're one of those teams at the moment in time, until, until they can get themselves balanced right, they'll be up and down, like, maybe like Norwich are. He goes to Doncaster. He wasn't afraid to go and take a smaller club like Doncaster. And he's produced some really good football because I try and watch as many of my old teams as possible. And he plays some good football. I thought we may have beat Rotherham. Rotherham are difficult to beat because they've got big, strong lads, you know, and they play the type of football what Pulis will, will uh, play. But I just thought, new manager coming in, uh, it may give him a lift. But the only slight problem with the game on other night is, yes, he's coming in and he needs to have a look at players. But these players have not been giving us the perform performances to get us out of it. So yeah. I, I would have thought, right, let me start afresh. Let me not listen to to uh, Tom or I don't mean this in a nasty way, by the way. Yeah, yeah. Or, or to anybody else. I'm going to go in here. I'm going to change it. And, and have a look. Put some other players in. Let's have a look at some other players. What money should have been disregarding? Yeah. He, he didn't do it. He stuck, by the, he stuck with the ones or listened to what other people said. Um, All right, and it well, weren't great. I must admit, it weren't great. And when when we got when they got sent off, and, and I'm like anybody else at the moment in time. I want to play. I want to play football, but I'm not bothered what how we play if we can get out of this mess. And then uh, let's start again. I think if it gets time, if it gets time, and it all it all depends on how he is with Chance here. Because if he lets Chance here, and I don't mean to be horrible to Chance here, if he lets Chance here dictate to him, he's got to be the one what picks the team. Yeah, he has to be the absolutely. One. And then what, he, then... he lives and dies by that that way. 
So let's right. um before before we get to Rotherham then, because I could spend all night on that game last night. Let's come to some more questions from Facebook, and then we'll uh, we'll finish the night out talking about that bloody game last night. Because I agree with you, Terry. They they you know it, it, it's like Darren Moore turned around to Tomo and went, "Who've we been playing? Let's chuck them out." You know what I mean? And so yeah. So let's let's go to Facebook now, and then let's let's come back to that because that was a good point. Um, there's been a couple of questions about. Your, your actual playing career. Someone said, ask, you, ask Terry about the... Well, he said he'd put Simon. I'm imagining that's a Simon Stainrod incident and being on news at 10 is the question. Right. Well, obviously, <laughs> it, was a, it was a riot, which were, what, which were frightening. And I remember Jack crying. Um, <laughs> I remember Simon being back in our half. Now, you can imagine me and Simon being back in our half. Right? Wow. <laughs> uh, you wouldn't have seen that many times, but we, we were back in, in our half and we were over the far side where all the Wednesday fans. Simon did something and I went to uh, knee him and I, I raised my knee. Uh, I didn't touch him, I stopped myself. Simon went down. The guy who sent me off is a guy called George Courtney. Have a look at him, a referee. I remember. From the North East. Remember I got sent off five times. He sent me off four. <laughs> And I've never kicked anybody in my life. It was me who kept getting kicked. It was retaliation. But Simon, I did retaliate, but I, he'll tell you the truth himself. I stopped myself. What happened? Once I got sent off, Simon jumped up and winked and started laughing. And it set the fans off. And it was it hit the six o'clock news, uh, 10 o'clock news. I got banned uh, for four games. The team, uh, the fans got banned from standing behind both goal areas. For four games, Bert, Bert McGee pulled me and, and gave me a rollicking, and I said, "Listen, you've just made more money out of me from that incident because people. So don't tell me what I can do or I can't do, because you've just made a fortune with twenty-four thousand seats and not people standing now. So and that's a true story, by the way. I love that. Go on, Ben. Um, which player? Uh, Munir Ahmed said, which player does did, does Terry believe most resembles his style of play today? Oh, that's good. That's a good question. So, Ooh, that, any, anybody that, you want, Terry, you know, Messi, Ronaldo, you know, go for it. Go for it. Who, 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 rep, who, who rep, they don't, they don't have the confidence. They don't have the confidence I have them to. <laughs> um, oh, just to see the football, is a lot of them. There's not a lot of people what dribble with the ball now, is there? Not, not know, really. I'm trying to Sterling, West. Sterling, but he is he's, he's like short, sharp burst, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Whereas I could do it short, sharp, and I could do it from in, well into my own half because I got nope. that power. Where Sterling, I mean, people criticise Sterling uh, up until this last couple of years, but you can see it wasn't it wasn't someone what could do it from a, a seventy yards run. You've got to get him in and around between the the goals and and the halfway line, middle of that, and he will explode. He will it cause all sorts of problems. He used uh, to do that, didn't he? Craig the, Bellamy. The kid, I remember. Who, the kid who left the kid who left Manchester City went to uh, to Bayern Munich. Got Sarni. to sit. Sarni. Sarni. I would say something like Sarni. I love, I love that. Love yeah. it. I love, I love he's just compared himself to Sarni. That's, I love that's it. amazing. I love it. But <laughs> no, I, no, I, I, I tell you what, though, to Sarni, I compared yeah. Sarni to me. Yeah, there you are. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Seniority. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, I'll tell you what, before you get on to Rotherham, right? We, we drew with Chesterfield. This is the funny story. This the, some of the fans will remember this. We drew with Chesterfield, and Jack has gone absolutely ballistic. And if any ex players are listening to this, they'll be pissing themselves or laughing. <laughs> anyway, they scored it 93rd minute to make it 3 3. And Jack got so all week we're training, right? Are running deep into the corners. Right, I'm, I got blamed. For, by the way, I didn't, I didn't uh, lose the ball. Right, it was somebody else that lost the ball, but I got blamed for it. Right, so we did, we did all week of running the ball into the corners. Right, so I, I said to Andy, "This is boring me, sick." I said, "I'm pissed off. We are, we all this." So I said, "I tell you what, I'm going to do Andy on Saturday." Andy McCulloch, I'm, I'm talking about. I said, uh, "I'm going to get the ball." I'm going to take it into. Let me, uh, I'm going to take it into corner, and whatever end we're kicking at, I'm going to run, run the full length of pitch and take it back to our goalkeeper. Anyway, I got the ball 
as we were kick, kicking towards Lapinane then, I got the ball on the left-hand side and Jack shouted, corner! Right? We 4 nil up. Or 5 one up, something like that. I ran into Lapinane corner, right into the corner flag, ran the full length back, passed the ball back to, to um, Bob Bowden. I tell, I tell Andy McCullough, and Andy said, you don't do it. I said, who oh, don't do it? You watch. <laughs> anyway, and the fans were, some of the fans were booing because obviously I shouldn't have been doing it. Some were laughing. And then after the game, Jack went ballistic. Are you trying to take the piss out of me and all this, like, you know? But uh, no, it, great club, great club to play for. Um, <laughs> and it was, a, it was a great time. I mean, we weren't a great team, but we were a decent team at that level, you know. But uh, great memories, absolutely the, fabulous memories. The, there has been another question come in about Jack Chow, and this might very well be after that. Um, ask Terry about the fight with Jack in the gym. I think everybody knows about that. I mean, Mel I tells it. I you see, know. Mel tells it. Mel tells it in a, a different way because on on the after dinner speaks, they all add a little bit to it. But the truth of the story was this. I was enjoying playing through the middle. When I said playing through the middle, Jack used to say to me, you're not a centre forward. I said, I know I'm not a centre forward. I said, but I'm never going to win a ball. When we keep, when Bob Bowler gets the ball and you want him to kick it out of the pitch, no way I can end that ball. Because you've got big six foot centre halves, six foot two, six foot three centre halves. Anyway, we traded, it was, some unknown reason we couldn't train outside, I think with snow, whatever it was, but we're playing Norwich and we're training in the gym. And Jack shouted, uh, you're playing on the wing tomorrow at Norwich. And I said, no, I'm not. And he's at bottom end of the gym. And he said to me, you are. I said, no, I'm not. Can you know all you people, all the older people remember the sheepskin jack, coat Jack used to wear, especially the Arsenal game when he was shifting snow off the pitch with that sheepskin coat he got on. And I could see him. He started to take the coat off. And I could see him. He's getting angrier and angrier. He says, when I tell you you're playing through the middle, uh, you're playing through the middle. I said, no, I'm not. Or I don't play, so play God knowing. You know, anyway, he's getting closer and closer. And he starts to take his coat off it. I thought, <laughs> right, now Mel says, I threw the punch. No, I didn't. And this is gospel truth on my two kids' life. Jack threw the punch. And he's th as he's thrown the punch, I've ducked, as you would, as somebody's throwing the punch that you've ducked. Right? And I've, I've got Jack now to my shoulder, to his tummy. Right? So I've lifted him, he's gone over my shoulder. And everybody, <laughs> All, all the lads have jumped in to pull us apart, right? To pull us apart. Barry Mel. And Mel stood off about five yards off because I could see Mel from corner my eye, laughing his head off and shouting, <laughs> hit him, Jack, hit him. <laughs> <laughs> but that is the true story. But, I mean, everybody thinks of me. Me and Jack were just like a married couple. Oh. Right? If we weren't talk, well, we didn't ever not talk. We'd argue. But within the next three or four minutes, we were, we were laughing as though we hadn't had an argument. You know, like I said, I would have run through a brick. I didn't like the way we played at Sheffield Wednesday. No, I didn't. But I would have run through a brick wall. And I respected Jack so much. Not, not because of um, his coaching, for what he won in the game. Mm -hmm. And as a man, that man gave to anyone. He would give to anyone. People talk about him. You know, uh, he never bought a drink. And he did because everybody would offer him a drink anyway. Mm -hmm. You know, but he would, we had play, we had fans what um, would spend all the money. He would get, it's all right, come on, you're coming back on coach reels. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant manager. Not the best manager I had because Clough and Kendall were, and it proved it because they won something. But Jack, I'd soon have a night out with, with, with my, a good night out with Howard, but brilliant. Uh, I'd soon have a night out with Jack, then I would with Cluffy. Right, but Clough is by far the best. And listen, I got away with murder at, at uh, Nottingham Forest. He never bollocked me. You can ask any of them. Robbo, Martin, and it, they'll all tell you. They used to call me God. They got about Beckham. They used to call me Golden Bollock for the uh, brain club. <laughs> Remember what? I tell you what. So I was going to say, let's talk about Rotherham, but bollocks are Rotherham. I, I've, I, I want to hear some of these old stories. I've got another one here. Uh, tell us about the Greyhound in the treatment room. What went off there? Yeah, well, we bought this greyhound. Um, we well, just bought a greyhound. It was called. It was a greyhound uh, called Spiral Please. It was trained by Harry Cap, uh, Harry Crapper. Uh, and Jack said, "Why don't we get a greyhound?" And I'd had enough of greyhounds, if I was honest. I, I, I've always had them because you more money than enough. Anyway, we finished up buying it. Me, Andy McCulloch, and Jack. 
And as it happened, it got injured in its second in its second race, and it was running on a Friday. Uh, and Harry Crapper said, "Can you get any infrared on it?" Mel must have been injured, and I took the dog into the stadium. I'm trying to think of physio what. If any lads are watching this, what to uh, call him Graham? I forget his surname. He might have called him Graham his, his first name. It's a long time ago. And when I go into treatment room, I, I said to I said to Graham, I said. Can I get some infrared on this dog? It's running on Friday. It needs some treatment. <laughs> Mel, Mel's on the treatment room, on the treatment bed, table. And uh, he said, yeah. I said, get off that, Mel. So Mel said, what are you talking about? I want to play on Saturday. I said, dog's running Friday. You'll be all right. He said, don't worry about Saturday. I'll make sure you'll be fit for Saturday. I said, I want this dog. As it happens, the dog run. It got late. It didn't win. We lost a few quid, me, uh, me and Jack. I think Andy went a big better, <laughs> right? And Mel played on the Saturday. And I said, and by the way, we won on the Saturday. I said, now are you thanking me, Mel? I told you I'd get you fit. True <laughs> <laughs> <So> story, that. <laughs> so Mel Sterling, yeah. yeah. I'll, give you one. I'll give you the best one. Go on. I'll give you two good ones, really. Go on. I'm playing for Huddersfield Town, and we're playing at... Um, <laughs> Oh, God. Thank God. <laughs> Sorry. I'm, I'm my, friends, my friends from my village, my friends from my village, Dennis Doody, um, Kev Kelly, Joe Kelly, um, Tony Kelly. Tony was it's like him, always laughing. Always laughing. Anyway, I would never want for going into treatment, into dressing rooms before games. I used to drive me back to it. People being sick, people panicking. But, you know, I can't do it all that. <laughs> you know, I always think we could beat them. I think well, if we played Barcelona at Sheffield Wednesday, I thought we could beat them. Anyway, we're playing at all. And I've backed this horse. I've under pound on this horse called Pebbles, right? There's a knock up window. It's my mate, Tony Kelly. He said, can I come up bus and listen to it? Because there weren't televisions around like there is now. I said, mm. come on. Anyway, just after quarter three, he comes marching onto books, Mick Buxton. He says to me, he said, what are you doing? We kick off at three o'clock. I said, don't worry, we'll, we'll beat them. I'll score for you. We beat Old City 1-0. But the best one was at uh, Forest. I was so angry after, you know, not getting back into the team, having been injured. And um, Tommy Dock is tapping me up to go to, to, to Derby. And so Clough has played me in two games and they hadn't won for a month. And we beat Hereford away 1-0. Uh, I scored the win and then we drew up at Carlisle. And as it happened, we finished third that season. We managed to get up and the rest, the rest is history about Forrest. But I, I weren't over keen of Pete Taylor. And I, 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 you know, Pete said to me, I didn't put my foot in. You know, uh, I said, I've just been out for nine months and I was frightened of him and he gave him way. Anybody, what tell, anybody, any player will tell you what's had a serious knee injury. They'll tell you, you are, you are a bit weary about you. You know, that was my first game. And we, we won 1-0, and they hadn't won for a month. And I tell him, I said, what you know about football, Pete, I forgot. Don't tell me about football. Anyway, I played on the Saturday, and then they, they left me out again the midweek against Southampton, and I went ballistic with manager. And the Clifford would start laughing at me. He wouldn't. He never get, I never had a ball looking off Brian Clough. And that is gospel to never... I used to call me God bollocks to them a lot. They did, did Robo and all that. But they would get a ball looking. I never got a ball looking. Anyway, um, slammed the door and it came off his injuries and he got his feet up, he's laughing his head off. I go to see him the following day and I said to him, I want to I wanna move. And he said to me, look, you've had a serious injury and um, I had to finish with this. So calm down, you'll get back into the team. But I don't think you're ready. I said, if you don't think you're ready, I'm ready. That's okay. But I think I'm ready and I want to play. So I finished up going to Derby. Right, but what what had happened in between that? Um, he thought I'd calmed down. Anyway, I went in again uh, Monday. I goes into the same he's not in, and I see Pete, Pete's reading the Sporting Chronicle. There's a Sporting Life and the Sporting Chronicle in, in, in our day, and Pete's reading the Sporting Chronicle in 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 his office. And he said to me, uh, "Come in." He said, "Can I help you, Terry?" I said, "No, I don't speak to organ grinder. Where's Where's Gaffer?" And he said to me, "He said." Uh, He's not in today. He says, can I do anything for you? I said, no, can you? I'm going to swear here. So please, because this is what I said. I said, can you bollocks? And I walks out. As I'm walking out, he's shouting after me. And I slammed, two, I slammed a letter on the coffee table in his room. I said, give that to the manager. 
and then you can't help me. And I walked out. He comes shouting after me, what do you want me to do with this? I just ignore him. He gets into the car. As I gets into the car, he knocks on the window. He said, tell me, what do you want me to do with this? I said, I've told you once, give it to the manager. He said, it's your electric bill. I got, a, I got the electric bill in the car. <laughs> I said, give it, I told you, give it to the manager. He said, it's your electric bill. What do you want me to do with it? Said, give it to the manager and tell him to pay it. You know, <laughs> uh, brilliant times, you know. And really, I was impatient. I did have a bad injury and I should have bided him the time. I should have oh, bided him. Amazing. So I, I tell you what, let's, let's touch briefly on Darren Moore. I could, I could listen to these stories all night, but I know you're, you're doing your own podcast now, Terry, right? So, you know, tell yeah. us about that. Well, I, when I walked away from football, because I did, and I, 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 I got asked to come into it, uh, back into it, and I saved Gould from getting relegated. Mm -hmm. It looked like being doomed. Um, and then the following season, we kept up. And then the following season, uh, we'd won eight out of nine. And then the, uh, the chairman, Chris, uh, Chris Ray, would want me to get rid of players. Couldn't afford to pay for them. But we're only earning 700 quid. We're getting 750 quid. I kept it down to 400 quid, so I saved him 300 quid. Made him £29,000 in money with, with players. I sold Ian Sampson to Sunderland. I sold a kid to Wigan for 5,000 quid. I got Forrest and Leeds down. We made another £8,000 a piece from them. So I said, where's all that money gone? And then when I walked away from it. Um, so, and I thought, well, it gives me time now to do what I want to do instead of being pestered all my, all my life. And then um, Gabby... How Gabby? How come with Gabby? I don't know, but he, he, he come and asked me if, if I got a phone call. Will I do a podcast, and then I really thought about it. Why not? We'll start to remember this on 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 my time in football, and that's how it that's how it started. Um, and then a lot of people send messages, and I don't. If unless they send me less messages on my personal one, then I don't reply to them because. I don't know how to get onto him half the time. <laughs> so um, that's how it came about. And then he'll say to me, oh, so and so, want to come, uh, want you go on Sheffield Wednesday? Well, I would never turn Sheffield Wednesday down. Um, and then I've got one next week for, for Everton. And so these other people now ask me to go on theirs. But we, we're really trying to get our podcast going. We're, we're looking for a sponsor, me and Gabby. All right. Okay. So, so what, 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 sort of what sort of stuff do you chat about? On, or, or, or is the aim of Football it? Football in people? general. Football in general, you know, it could be Jack Grealish, it could be Foden, it could be Sheffield Wednesday, you know, it could be anything. What's what, what's happening uh, in football at that moment in time, and obviously managers and the way of their philosophies. I mean, people think I'm critical of English, and I'm not. I am not. I want English coaches to do well. I mm -hmm. really want them to do well, but we're never going to do well the way how we play football. No, and they complain. To, they complain about not getting a chance in football. Don't. Do you think they're going to give Sam Allardyce a chance to manage Liverpool and Everton if they're going to play football like that? You've no, got to right. be brave like him at, him at Brighton. Yeah, they might get relegated, right? But he's got a far better chance of getting a bigger club than what Sam Allardyce, Sam Allardyce has. Oh, he's got, got more of a progressive thinking behind him. I'll tell you what, yeah. Terry, actually, you were talking about comments online. And, and listen, if you want, you know, get in touch with Terry on uh, on Twitter if you want to, uh, if you want to consider sponsoring this podcast and all the rest of it. Um, but there, we've had a really good few comments here, Terry. Uh, stand out one here. Uh, you know, there's another couple. Stand out one here from my mum. Uh, she says, did Brian Clough play the electricity bill? <laughs> No, but they bought me a car, by the way. Yeah, somebody's written that. Somebody's mentioned what happened at Bury, what happened at Wimbledon. Uh, there's a story there and a car, apparently. So they are. I'll lead you in. Go on. Right, the Bury one. Uh, when I was asking, when I was asking him for a move, I said, "Anyone come in for me?" And I know Derby would ta uh, 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 been tapping me up to go and play for Derby County. He said, "Young man, no one's come to sign for you. Uh, no one's come in for you, but Bury have." And I said to him, "Well, I'll go to Bury then." And he looked at me, gone out. So I goes to Bury. I played a couple of games, right? And I don't like travelling, so I, I stayed uh, uh, in a pub up at Bury, just near the ground. I get a phone call from from Clough, and he said, "Young man, who we'll give you permission to go and uh, train up at Bury?" I said, "You can play there, but you can't go and train. Lad, get your ass back down here tomorrow." <laughs> I went in to see. Um, I'm trying to think of the manager at Bury at the time. Was was so, was that part of the deal then that you had to train at Forest and then go and play for Bury? Yes. Was that, I was that a normal that. thing? 
I didn't know that. Yeah. I didn't know that. When you, like if Jock went on loan from Grimsby to a, a, a non-league club, they would train it because they don't train. But mm-hmm. when you go to a league club, you would train with them. Cool. Right? So I go to see the manager and I said to him, I've had a phone call from, from the gaff, from gaffer um, that I can't train here. Right? He got, he got on the phone to his secretary and he got, he got the phone. In those, in those days, the phones would come on with a loudspeaker and they'd have five or six different numbers. One would be for secretary, two would be for chairman. So anyway, he gets him on loudspeaker and he said to him, he said, uh, Terry's coming to see me about, um, he can't train up here. He's got to train with you. Clough to I've never spoke to Terry. <laughs> you know, and I said, you what? You know, and he, he put the phone down, right? I played another game at Bury, and then he called me back. I didn't. I didn't finish. I think I played three games. I didn't. I didn't finish the uh, the, the full uh, loan period. But I mean, I really shouldn't have left the club. I really shouldn't have because I would have got back into the team. But I'm saying I would have. Got, you don't know because I went on to to win everything. But he did think a lot of me. What was the other one you were saying? Uh, Wimbledon. I can't talk about that. All right, no worries. I'll leave that for your podcast. You know what I mean? I don't want to sweep that up. So well, uh, what it, what, that was, uh, we played We played at our place. We played at their place and a young lady put a, a telephone number into my pocket. And it was, a, and when we when we were playing Wimbledon up at our place, we, um, she rang me up. I gave her my number. We exchanged numbers. I gave her my number and I met her at the uh, station. I'm not talking about the other things. Because I booked it to the Rutland Hotel we, where we meet on a 12 o'clock for this pre, pre-match meal. It's the same night when the um, Yorkshire Ripper got caught. Right. Right. And he's bang, 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 bang on the door. I'm in, I'm in my room with this girl. <laughs> right. Having a bath. Right. We get told, get downstairs. And I'm thinking, what's this all about? You know, we know there's something wrong because you want police. And when we got outside, there was a couple of uh, police coppers who I knew what came to games and they were telling us what it was all about. I'm thinking, I'm in serious trouble because we're not supposed to be at night before. But I weren't drinking. I'm not, I've never been a drinker, you know. Um, and I'm thinking, Jack's going to go but absolutely ballistic because they took his names and everything. And, uh, what, were, what were we doing there? Why were we there and everything else? Why, why, why did it to us? I, I don't know, but that's what it was all related to, because he were caught at the, where the Rutland, where the Rutland old tell is. The hell, yeah. And the, 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 there's a little road down there. Yeah, he, yeah. What he told them, he told them he, he, he wanted a weed. He, he jumped over there to throw the hammer away. And when they realised it was him, because he put a false number plate on, and it was a rover, they went back and checked, and they found an hammer. And then they realised he they caught the Yorkshire Ripper. Jeez, anyway, because you were down we beat Wimbledon the following day. I scored two goals. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what. Uh, so Terry, your podcast is called The Current View, and I listened to it yesterday, and I must admit, really enjoyed it. I tell you what, I'll let you talk about Rotherham on that because I've took enough of your time up, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks a lot once again. Please round of applause for Mr. Terry Curran. I'm going to take us off. But normally, I think Vic normally does this for me. She's uh, she's had a jab today, so she's off. But Vic's done this for me. I'm going to stop recording. Hang on, no. Where do I want to?